name is Caroline Roussel. I am a French Canadian soprano. I live in the wonderful province of Quebec. I will be introducing you today to one of Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco's song cycle, which is called La Vita Nova, and it is based on sonetti taken from La Vita Nova di Dante Alighieri. I will be talking to you today about the music, about the poems, about Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco and about all the things around this cycle and you will also hear a couple of examples that we pre-recorded for you and I hope you are going to like the content of this video. So let's get started. Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco was born in Firenze, just like Dante, in 1895, he was raised in a Jewish family. He lived in Tuscany most of his life, in Siena, and he moved to America just like many European composers just before World War II. He took part in this generation of composers who took their European heritage to America and contributed to create for the Americans a new musical identity that was actively taking part into creating the Broadway music that we know today. Now, what is interesting about Italy at that time, at that time that uh, Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco was living there and composing, what's interesting is that he lived around the same time as Stravinsky in Russia, as Schoenberg in Austria, and when we look at the works that all these composers created during the same time, there is such a big difference. In some places in Europe, there was such, a, there was such an importance to create a new musical aesthetic that would push away everything that we have experienced so far in musical history. For instance, if we all know the Stravinsky spring cycle, if we listen to it, we will, of course, see that there is a big difference between this and the piece that we're studying right now. And if we look at some operas by Schoenberg as well, we will find such a big difference. If we listen to Wozzeck, we will see, we will see a new way of conceptualizing the music and trying to push for, forwards the musical techniques and harmonies. Now, in Italy, we can see pretty much that Italians were a lot more attached to their heritage, which made them want to do more for what was already composed, already created. So the trend at that time was to was to take some poems some paintings some plays some of the previous music that was composed by scarlatti or corelli and take those piece of arts and put them back to music composing a new concerto on a corelli theme so when we look at Castelnuovo Tedesco and Respighi and Volferrari, we can see that, for instance, ancient music, Gregorian music, Baroque music was so important for them. And we can, we can hear a recreation of that kind of art while all the other countries of Europe are pushing forwards and making things that are more shocking to the public rather than making previous works live again. So we can hear generally in their music such a modal color, but at the same time with different harmonies than what was composed at that time. So we can hear a little jazzy color in some of the chords in the harmony, something more mysterious and more developed, but really following a melody that would be referring to some ancient way of writing melodies. We will dive more into the core of the subject, talking about the pieces themselves. So in this cycle, 
Castelnuovo chose himself four of the sonetti of Dante's La Vita Nuova. The first one he sets into music is Cavalcando l'altrier per un cammino. So in English it would be riding the other day along the track. So here is the Italian text as well as the English translations for it. So while Dante was traveling to another region, he meets Amore. And then Amore calls his name and tells him that he has his heart from his previous love and carries it to another woman, another lady, who will become his defense. And then this Amore disappears and somehow merges into Dante. Of course, this piece takes part of the chamber music and not into the opera, which is something to me that is very, very nice to play right now by these times where we're recluded, because playing an opera is so much more complex to create fully. When you have an opera, when you sing an aria, you need to have the full orchestra to see really how genius is the composer to put the flute here and the violins here. So it is very complex to create. And here, with chamber music such as this one, we can have such a real impression of the music just with the piano and with the voice. So there are some very simple things that happen, but very effective in the way to recreate and represent the different things and invocate the different elements of the sonetto of the song. So here, at the very beginning, the first theme we hear is the, I would call, cavalcando theme. So Castelnuovo Tedesco uses a rhythm that sounds a little bit like a horse and then the singer takes it back and goes on with it. At the very beginning of the piece, we can see so clearly that he says, into the music, he says, here I am riding a horse and then I'm thinking of this and that. And we can see the clear change because of the articulation, because of the melody, because of how he writes that and make us really recreate that directly. And it's kind of the same when we're at Trovai amore in mezzo della via, in abito legger da peregrino. When he talks about the abito legger, he goes with all these staccatis to really make us feel how light and to make us see the same picture as he sees when he reads the sonetto. And then when we get to the part where he says, e sospirando pensoso venia per non veder la gente a capochino. We can hear the sighs through the piano. We can hear those little motives going like a, like a sigh. And throughout the piece, he really takes back this theme of the cavalcando, of the horses, and he really puts it everywhere, to the piano, to the singer, and then he changes, he varies a little bit, he takes just a little part of it, he takes the whole thing, he puts it into other voices, and then the culminant point of the piece is when he says, Allora presi di lui si gran parte, che gli disparte. Then there is such a slancio, such a, such a swing to it, and then at che gli disparte, he creates a diminution all of a sudden of everything. And we can really feel, hear and see the disappearance of Amore. The piece ends with the repetition of the previous, the first, the very first theme of the piece. When I began learning this cycle, to me this piece was such a, a treasure. It's really modal, you can feel how ancient Castelnuovo Tedesco wanted us to see this piece and to see this poem. But at the same time, towards the end of the piece, he puts those jazz chords under the e non ma corsi come
as mentioned earlier in this video, I will be skipping the second and the third pieces because we want you to come back to the concert when we finally can present it. But basically they correspond to Negli occhi porta la mia donna amore e tanto gentile e tanto onesta pare. So those two pieces correspond to the section 21 and 26. Those are really beautiful pieces, very sensitive, very refined pieces. And of course, tanto gentile, tanto onesta pare is through my researches, the sonetto that was really the most put into music of all the sonettis of La Vita Nova. And here comes the fourth and the last song of the cycle, which I would say is the most dramatic and therefore the most beautiful one of them. I know Axel would argue with me on that, but to me it is really the one that makes me dig the most into my feelings and the one that I love the most to sing. This sonetto comes from the section 40, so it is his poem addressing the pilgrims traveling to Rome. This sonetto begins with De peregrini che pensosi andate, O pilgrims who go thinking. Now Beatrice is gone, she is dead, Dante has had his loss. So it is about Dante who sees pilgrims passing by. Dante thinks they come from a distant place as they look so pensive, but he wouldn't want to tell them what happened because he thinks these words would make anyone cry, anyone weep, basically. So he sits down and writes, composes a sonetto, a poem about, about all this situation. Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco writes down just before the piece, dolce ma intenso, which is to me exactly what this piece should be about and what the music inspires us. The piece begins with a very slow pace and very calm energy. And then all of a sudden we hear for the first time this, this little movement that will haunt us for the rest of the piece, which is fa ri 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 so fa and to me, going back to this is the scar and how hurtful this is for, for Dante to think about this all the time. It's always coming back. His grief is always coming back to him, just as they would for these people. And throughout the piece, the repetition keeps on going at every bar, every measure we go by. There is this... And at one point, what the singer is singing is not even concording. It's not even matching with this. So it makes all the harmony so vibrant and so unsustainable. And he makes it as well the culminant point of the piece for this struggle between the singer and the piano. And then at half of the piece, we go back to this first chord and the very calm pace of Se voi restate per voler laudire. And throughout the end, we can hear all these scales going up, talking about Beatrice going to paradise. E la perduta la sua Beatrice going up there in the high notes. And then last verse, very calm, almost no piano at all. And taking back this theme that the singer sings when it's very calm at the beginning of the piece. 
This video has made you want to come to see our concert when we can get to Dublin in order to give you this beautiful program that we learned especially for this concert. And of course when we do the concert there will be these pieces but as well as other ones. This program is one of the most beautiful programs I've ever had the chance to learn. We will also have some Petrarca in the concert, but it will all be connected some way to the Italian Dolce Stil Nuovo. I was very glad to get to do this video and to get to share with you, to get to look for more details in order to make you know more about all that. I will see you after for the questions you may have about this video and the content of it. Thanks for listening and I am looking forward to see you in a real... Thank you so much.